it's when I was climbing the stairs to go to the airplane. I just walked and step by step, I was building myself to be successful. In my mind, I was building my mind to work and not to come back with a failure. So when I sit in the airplane, I just stop crying. But of course, I was leaving my family. I become a man in that plane. Yep. I was born in New Caledonia, and uh, for me, coming back to my childhood is, uh, for me, beautiful memories because uh, I share my childhood with my numerous family. We were numerous. We were more than 18 kids. My father, he was a teacher, but he loved sport. So every time when he was a teacher at school, he tried to buy balls, uh, volleyball, basketball, tennis ball, racket, just to give us the opportunity to play any games. And indeed, uh, when I was uh, at the um, primary school, there is in uh, the program of school a scholarship uh, is a, a union national sport uh, scholarship. And therefore, I started to, to participate in any discipline. So maybe uh, 200 meters, 400 meters, uh, one, uh, 500 meters, and so on. And uh, sometimes uh, the pole, sometimes uh, bi biathlon. So for me, it was uh, a way to, to pass, to spend some time with my friends also, because they were doing the same. So, uh, or I go to the library, or I go to the field, track field, uh, to run uh, and to have fun. Football is, came to my life very, very early in my childhood when I was a, a little because I have two older brothers where they play football and of course my father was also a good footballer so I think that uh, they gave me these genes and, uh, and I was inspired by them because I used to go every uh, Sunday to see uh, a little championship in my country where my father was playing so I was following them and uh, maybe therefore my passion uh, was uh, from that moment. Uh, uh, but yes, in the end, I just play only tournament with my uh, friends. So every Saturday we have a game, but Saturday is maybe 10 games because we, we just play 30, 30 minutes each game. Uh, but it's long, and, but it's also uh, competitive because in the end you are the champion of the of the region of the tribes and so on so it was a fantastic uh, journey for me with my friends because uh, i grew up with them uh, we played together and uh, we won uh, some tournaments and once uh, and this is very crucial in my pathway that uh, i went to see my friends playing because i didn't have any license because we grew up together and they asked me to come to play uh, with them, a friendly game. So they asked me to come and I said, no guys, I don't have any license. I said, no, it's just a friendly game, so you could play with us. So I did make, I play with them, but I didn't, I wasn't focused. I just play like we were friends. At, at halftime, I heard the manager say, but he's not good for us, this boy. <laughs> you bring me somebody, but he's not very good for us. And they all say no, because it's a friendly game. Uh, don't worry, when is there is a tournament or where is a real game, he will show off. And the manager, I heard about this and I said, okay, I will never come back again here because I came here just for, to have fun with my friends. So I stopped uh, playing football. I went to uh, tennis, to play tennis. Okay. <laughs> 
uh, to avoid this kind of um, debate. But somehow, in the Union National uh, Scholarship, we meet between schools, and there's a tournament, football tournament also. And in that tournament, there is one team guided by one of the best players from New Caledonia. And he had made his own academy. And we played against his academy. And we won 3-0, 5-0. He, he cannot understand. He said he, he was surprised. So he came to me and said, hey, what's your name? I need your name. I need your family name, address. I need to talk with your family. And I was surprised to, what is, why he won that. And in the end, he contacted my family, my parents. But I refused it because I was 15 years old. I didn't want to come to Europe because I felt very well in my family, in my, in my environment. Sixteen years old, he came back to me. I was in a college already. And he went to see my director, the college director, to say, <clears throat> I need to talk with uh, this uh, <clears throat> student because he needs to change school. He needs to come to my academy because there's also school academy with a study, scholarship. But I refuse again. And uh, when I was 17, there is a civil war in my country. And uh, my people was fighting for the independence. And also I become like El Che Guevara. <laughs> I wanted to be Che Guevara. <laughs> But my older brother asked my father to let me go to have another pathway because he was a teacher, my brother is a teacher, so he wanted somebody who change this uh, social category. And indeed, my mother, when he heard about this uh, idea, he refused it. She refused it. And I do understand because I help her in the daily life uh, at home. Uh, I, I try to help her because we are numerous. And uh, I used to go to, uh, to the bakery to run 12 kilometers to, to grab the bread and coming back before they go to school, my, my uh, young brothers and sisters. So um, many things, I, I was fishing for the family. So for me, it's, it's uh, beautiful memories because I do that for my family without coming here so um, and I was committed to, to help my family and one day when they decided to give me the opportunity to go to France it, it's another revolution in, in the family yes Europe I learned Europe through the books for example, when I was in the college, I was learning Latino and Greek language. And uh, somehow it was so difficult for me, the, uh, the Greek. And I went to a sport uh, option <laughs> as tennis. But, um, but again, in my pathway, uh, what I learned from the book, I saw it in life. But the crucial moment is when I was climbing the stairs to go to the airplane. I just walked and step by step, I was building myself to be successful. In my mind, I was building my mind to work and not to come back with a failure. So when I sit in the airplane, I just stopped crying. Of course, I was leaving my family. I become a man in that plane, uh, committed. When I arrived in uh, FC Nantes, I needed to adapt myself to the team, to my teammates, to the coaching lesson, because I never practice every day. So I need to, to change my mindset to an agenda, because the agenda was scholarship. Monday, I do mathematics or history, whatever. Now, no, it's training, pause, lunch, training, study and so on so it's very different and therefore you also educate yourself how to be professional and trying to follow the agenda because if you are late we get fine fine you don't have money okay, fine suspended you cannot play it's very strange 
and I was very fortunate to meet uh, Mancini, um, Chiesa, uh, Sidov, uh, and so on, to give me this uh, comfort uh, to be in a new country and to adapt myself. So it was also a great uh, experience in, in Italy. Calcio at that time was the top of, of the world and uh, everyone wanted to go to the Calcio and I was there with the, the big names uh, I, I mentioned, Battistuta, uh, Baggio, okay, Del Piero Zidane, so on, they were there. Uh, yes, I, when I came to the Calcio was something for me great because my idols was there. Raycard was there, Ruth Gullit, uh, Van Basten. I was, I have this in my walls. There's people from, uh, from the Netherlands, uh, I look at them, they are in AC Milan, I say, wow, I, I, I hope one day I, would, I could go there, and boom. I was in Italy and I, I can see them, I can... Savi Savic, for example, or Desai was there already with Deschamps. Being in Italy in the biggest uh, championship was, uh, again, something uh, valuable and also competitive, because I always try to find competitiveness. Uh, for me, it's a new challenge, and I need to start again and try to be the best. Yes. When I started with the national team of France, I was only 21. I was surprised that they could ask me to play with the national team. <laughs> because for me, they are always better than me and uh, uh, more experienced than myself. And, uh, and I was surprised. When they called me, I was in a beach. I was in, uh, in uh, close to Nantes. Uh, with my friends, uh, having barbecue, and uh, someone came to me with Christian. Why are you doing here? You should be in the national team. And I said, I was laughing with them. I was joking with them. Again, I was, I was thinking it was a joke. They said, but you, sh you don't listen to the radio. So again, I don't believe it. And one of my friends went to the, to the bar where he can listen to the radio and, and TV. Uh, to, uh, to learn who are selected. So he was coming running, Christian, you need to go, you need to go. I said, uh, what's happening? He said, you need to go back uh, and you need to, to call your club. And it's true, the club has calling me, but they was calling at house. At that time, we don't have mobile phone. So um, I went to my house and in my machine, I heard, Please call us back. Uh, it's the sporting director. After it's the coach. After it's my friend, my teammate. Where are you? You need to go to. So I grabbed the phone. I called the sporting director. He said, where are you? I said, I'm at home. He said to me, listen, there is a train tonight uh, to Paris. You are selected. You need to go. So I just grabbed anything I had in my bag and I ran to, the, uh, to take the train. I was lost again because I don't know where is the Clairefontaine. <laughs> you, you are laughing, but it's true. I took a cab and the taxi driver didn't know where is Clairefontaine. So I need to stop again in a um, cabin, you know, a phone cabin, and I called the, the manager of the national team and said, sorry, I am here. We are lost with a taxi driver. Could you help us? So he explained to the taxi driver where it was. So this started my journey with the French nationality. <laughs> <laughs> it was Cantona, Papa, Ginola, uh, Perez, Bayerua, Dimeco, Basil Boli, Casoni, Olmeta, Martini, all of them uh, were Durand, all of them from Marseille, the champion, European champion. So uh, Deschamps, of course, Didier, and, and so I, I came there as a kid. So I was telling, hey, sir, hey, no, call me uh, Franck Sauzé, for example. Call me Franck, okay, because they were already 30s. Me, I was 21. <laughs> it wasn't my manager who, uh, who posed me. It was directly uh, Real Madrid uh, president, uh, Mr. Peace to his mind, to his soul, uh, Mr. Sanz, president of Real Madrid at the time, Lorenzo Sanz. I was actually, we were in the Euro 96 in England, and I was in my room and suddenly uh, the manager called me, 
I grab the phone, come immediately to my room. I look, I said, okay, I don't play tonight, maybe I don't play in the game. Something wrong here, the manager called me. So I went to his room and he said to me, he looked at me, I, I knocked the door, said, okay, come in. And he get out. And he said, sir, what? I said, no, no, wait. There, there is a phone, it's for you. Just go to grab it. And he, he wanted to give me privacy. So he went out, me, I took the phone. And it was Jacquet who gave me the privacy. I met Jacquet and uh, took the phone. Hola, soy Lorenzo Sanz. So he introduced himself, Presidente Real Madrid. I said, okay, there's a joke or uh, you cannot understand what's happening. And I said, uh, yes, sir, uh, what can I do for you? He, he just told me, listen, we want you in Real Madrid. Do you want to come? I said, tomorrow I come. And today I come. And yes, of course. But I didn't know if it's true, but that, because this is a, still for me, it's a joke. And suddenly somebody grabbed the phone and speak to me in French. You know that uh, it is uh, Lorenzo Sand who spoke to you. Yeah, I, say, I said, okay, so it's serious. Yeah, yeah, it's very serious. <clears throat> I said, okay, I told him already my word. If it's true, I come to you. Happened this. I come back to my room and I said, wow, somebody wanted me. What can I do? And I said, okay, I need to speak with my president, Sampdoria at the time. And I took the phone and I called him. Mr. Montovani, Enrico. Sir, I have this phone call from Real Madrid. Could you please put in relationship with Madrid? Did they call you? Yes, they called me, but I prefer to tell you the truth. This is what happened. And I saw that Sidov left. I saw that uh, Chiesa left. I would like to go also. So this is the number phone, please contact them. Me, I was doing this uh, Euro. After Euro, I came back to, to Sampdoria. Meanwhile, I went to my country because uh, I lost many of my brothers. So I went there and I came back. And the narrative had changed momentarily. <laughs> I came back and uh, I saw that uh, Barcelona is also in the in the loop. So I came and I was surprised that uh, too many journalists was coming to my house or uh, to the facilities, and I didn't understand. And uh, one day, Mr. Matovani called me, telling me that uh, I need to speak with the Barcelona board. And I said, no, I won't, I won't come because I gave my word to Real Madrid. I told you this for the beginning. It's impossible. We cannot do this. So happened a, a, a big fight between, uh, not big fight, happened a, a misunderstanding between myself and, uh, and Sampdoria. Uh, because uh, I used to say that Sampdoria was a bridge for me uh, to go for bigger club. And, and uh, till now I fully uh, I'm grateful uh, for Sampdoria for giving me the opportunity and also not or Sampdoria. This is in my pathway to, to be, uh, to elevate and graduate myself to, to better team. Wearing the shirt was uh, not only magical, but inspiring, inspiring you to, to be the best. And it was like this every time. The manager just say, okay, go to the pitch and play. Because when you have this shirt, you need to be capable to deliver something good or best. So, um, so this is a culture, this is a DNA of a club that I, I also uh, discover again here in Olympiacos, for example. Jupan Castle gave me again the opportunity to, to play in the Champions League and, and there we, we started our journey with uh, La Settima and La Octava with Del Bosque. But yes, Real Madrid is just uh, a dream come true. I did fight for, yes, I deserve to be in that big club and deserve to give back to Real Madrid his greatness because after 32 years of uh, silence, if I may say that, 
we give back to Real Madrid uh, uh, the new uh, Champions League Cup, uh, La Setima, with the Octava. Therefore, I asked my, my manager, my friend at the time, I said, listen, if you know a team who plays Champions League, I'm available. <laughs> I want to play Champions League. <laughs> Because the virus was there, uh, I was thinking that I could have a new challenge. That when you have this virus as the Champions League in your blood, you want to play this. So, in one call, he told me there is Olympiacos. I said, okay, I go. I didn't visit any facility. <laughs> I can. Kariskaki didn't exist at that time. It is, but it was um, closed. I met Mr. Kokalis and he offered me the opportunity to play for Olympiacos and uh, Mr. Limonis, the, the manager at the time. And we had a great uh, moment and, and journey here with Olympiacos, winning uh, two champions, I think, a cup also. And, uh, and after I moved to, to, to Geneva, Seva Geneva. But again, I knew that with Olympiacos I will play the Champions League and uh, that's why I came and I wanted to, to help also the club and therefore I'm here also to the organization to be in the highest standard, to compete with the, the best, to compete in Europe and so on. Before coming to, to Greece, we play against Greece and uh, I knew uh, Alexandris from, from, uh, <clears throat> from the national team. He also scored against us. Against us. We play in Nîmes, I think, uh, France, Greece, and Aleko score, and we equalize uh, later on, and I think we make a 1 1, something like that. And I exchange with Aleko, with Alexandres. So I didn't know that I would come to see Alexandres here in, with Olympiacos. And uh, therefore, I met Mr. Marakis, I, and I made some interviews here, and I think he liked it, I don't know. The, the, the feeling was uh, uh, fluid and good and fantastic. So uh, after that, we met in the final four uh, with the basketball in London, 2014, I think. And started the negotiation, started the talking because I was working also on TV and I could not uh, leave my job at the time. And, uh, and uh, it was a great opportunity because I know the club and for me, <clears throat> coming back to, to Greece is also because, uh, first of all, because I love Greece and I love the club. And I wanted to, to give something new for the club and uh, uh, to make the club not to improve, but at least to have his own standards. And, uh, and I think that uh, also belongs to Mr. Marinakis' vision to give this club in, as a European club, not anymore as in the championship, but at least like we can see in the, with the facilities, with the our stadium, new stadium, uh, we're all trying to uh, provide the, the new technology, new condition for, for the people who are working with us as a player, as a management. So for me, it's a great challenge and always a great journey. Uh, when you have a dream, when you have uh, a will, uh, you need to be strong and uh, work and trying to, uh, to elevate yourself uh, till uh, when you uh, reach your goal. What else has a dream? If I achieve many dreams, yes, I think so. But I didn't expect that. Uh, every time is uh, how I adapt myself to a new environment. I think that uh, is part of my pathway because uh, for me it's normal to understand each culture uh, where I am and to understand the people who are living there and, uh, and, and always trying to be myself. Uh, I'm very transparent and I'm myself with everyone so I didn't change myself from my childhood till, till now so only uh, with uh, the age but <laughs> otherwise I, I, I hope I, I didn't change this. Yep.